Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our International Agent webinar. Um, we were hoping that we would run this face to face, but we hopefully get to see you in the near future, and we're hoping that you're all doing well. My name is Selda Koch, and I'm the International Acquisition Coordinator here at Kangen Institute. Before we get started, I'd like to go through some etiquette. So firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the Gunung Wilambaluk and Wurundjeri lands on which I'm speaking to you from today. I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the various lands that you're joining me from. I wish to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. You will have an opportunity to ask questions throughout this webinar by popping them into the Q&A function. Um, and if we don't get through your questions immediately, we'll endeavour to do so by the end of the webinar. We won't be utilising the raise hand function. And just remember to please be respectful to the rights, privacy, safety, opinions and beliefs of others and demonstrate appropriate and respectful behaviour and use of language. Okay, let's get started. Today, I'll invite various panellists to run through our Automotive Centre of Excellence, explain the value of industry partners, provide an overview of our automotive course, and we'll be hearing from some current students, and we'll also learn more about our English Language Centre. This webinar is recorded, so you don't need to take any notes, but we will and we will share it with you afterwards. So our first panellist is Gavin Cripp. He's the Education Manager of our Commercial Vehicle and, and Engine Technology who is going to introduce the Automotive Centre of Excellence after this short video. Thank you. Hang in history's Automotive Centre of Excellence, or ACE at Docklands, has revolutionised tape training for automotive apprentices. Like a shiny new car, the ACE building at Docklands is designed to be a status symbol, with a sleek modern facade and large windows filling the interior full of natural light. Its five-star green star rating, with natural air conditioning, echoes the automotive industry's shift to more environmentally friendly smart technology. Behind the glass, the steel and the concrete, the training areas are pristine, featuring the latest state art technology and offering simulated workshops catering from everything from motorcycles to large trucks. School leavers are no longer shunning an automotive career. ACE trains over 3,000 automotive students every year. ACE is much, much more than a great looking building. Working with companies including Cali Racing, Mica, WPC Group, Repair Hub, Westar Trucks, Sheen Group, Renault Australia, Cummins South Pacific, Toyota Australia, Capital Smart Repairs, Ventura Bus Lines, William Adams, Jaguar Land Rover, Agco, the list goes on. ACE offers client specific training resources, specialised product trained teachers, and client endorsed supplier training to all of our groups. When ACE trains apprentices from the industry and engages suppliers like Viva Energy, SB Tools and Gates, why? These companies use these products in their workshops. It is the ability to tailor training to the individual needs of the employers that has seen the annual apprentice intake from clients such as MyCar increase from just six in the beginning to between 70 and 80 today. This highly flexible training environment, known as a class of one, is also evident in ACES timetabling, which is customised to meet the needs of the individuals, not the classes. The unique model recognises that an apprentice could be employed at any time of the year, not just in February or July, so the training schedules at ACES must have the ability to do this. The model, coupled with the latest online courseware, mean that the attendee numbers can differ from as many as 200 from one day to the next. Around 600 apprentices and trainees can do their training without stepping a foot inside ACE, while another 900 will attend for just 30 days of the year. Those who attend in person can move at their own pace. The classroom model, where everyone learns the same thing at the same time, is history. If the apprentice completes their work early, they can move into the next subject without having to wait for their classmates to catch up. Completion of training is no longer determined by the time of the year, but rather by the apprentice's level of competency that is agreed to by their employer and their teaching staff. The Class of One also includes systems to provide employers with weekly updates on how the apprentice is doing. If the apprentice is absent from ACE, the employer is notified the same day. Teachers are supported to spend more time teaching and less time doing the administration. This model is so successful, it will soon be rolled out across Bendigo, TAFE and Kangen Institute. In fact, it's so highly regarded, it is now being replicated in India, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Uh, good morning, welcome. Um, I guess thank you all for um, taking the time out to, um, to be part of our presentation. As Sal alluded to before, we, we wish we could have done this face-to-face uh, -face, um, event, but um, the current climate sort of is uh, preventing us from doing that. Um, as in the video, my name is Gavin Cribb. Um, I'm an education manager, one of two, at the Automotive Centre of Excellence in the Docklands campus. 
and I'm just going to run through a little bit about ACE, a little bit about business and, um, and how we engage with the industry and probably why we're, we're different to a lot of our competitors. Um, so in a bit of a snapshot, we have around 3,000 automated apprentices, uh, which cover almost all automotive trades. So from, you know, bikes to buses to boats to tractors, you know, we do it all. So we've got um, a, 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 an industry focus, probably like no other as well. We're in a very uh, lucky position to be working directly with the automotive industry. And we have industry backing uh, across most of our disciplines. In our, uh, our Docklands campus, we have approximately uh, 100 staff. Uh, around uh, 80 of those are teaching staff and around sort of 25 or so support staff. So around, out of that 100 staff, most of the, um, the, the, the teachers there have got a wealth of knowledge and a lot of experience in the industry and also in the training space. So, you know, probably 20 or 30 years experience for each of them. So we're looking around, you know, probably collectively 3,000 years of, of experience. So we're, we're pretty proud of our teaching staff and the models that we've got. And um, I guess I'll just pop this slide in here. It gives you a bit of a, um, an understanding of, of, of ACE and Kangan Institute as, a, as an entity. Um, you know, we're, we're here to stay. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not a fly by nighter. Uh, we do see there are quite a few uh, RTOs and providers that do sort of come up quite regularly. So there's often new uh, players in the market. We're here and we're very well established um, and we're not going anywhere. So, We've got the infrastructure, we've got the processes that we've been sort of fine tuning over, over a long period of time. And, um, and this is probably part of our, our, our success story. We've, we've got um, you know, a wealth of um, support staff and, and experience that helps us sort of redefine and um, fine tune our delivery. And um, our international programs get the benefit of our overall experience within, within these sort of 193 odd years. Um, our staff are long term, as I said, and they're, and they're committed to the program. So, with a um, sort of a backbone and a background like this, it, it really gives you a clear indication of uh, sort of where we've come from, and um, and that we are not, going, you know, we're definitely here for the long term. And so, any student that does come on, on to any of our programs, we are committed to, and um, you know, there's no chance that we'll be sort of shutting shutting doors, um, you know, somewhere in the in the future. So, uh, a rich history, and we're very proud of it. So I guess back on that history, we've um, over the years we've got the blessing, I suppose, to continually work and redefine sort of our delivery models. Um, we've got really well established um, processes, processes and procedures in in all of our teaching disciplines. And what we um, are lucky to do is be able to sort of continually fine tune those models. And and part of that is what we what we're calling a class of one operating model, which really allows us to a lot more flexibility to the industry and to our students. So. Um, this sort of snapshot gives you a, a, a bit of an overview of, of what the capacity of what we can do in terms of delivery. Um, and we'll go into our digital courseware um, shortly, but we have um, a, a wealth of online systems that support our teaching staff, it supports the students, and it supports um, you know, every, every facet of what we do. So we've got the, um, the ability to deliver training to um, remote delivery. So you know, we, we have staff that are situated within automotive um, settings such as Renault and Toyota and, and, and a couple of others. So we actually have full-time staff that work out of their headquarters. Uh, we have a, a suite of key clients, which we'll move into a little bit later, but we've uh, been able to establish programs that we've actually written with industry for industry. And we're taking a lot of those learnings and applying them into our programs across other parts of the Institute. We also do have the, um, the capacity and we have been delivering um, offshore. So uh, most recently we've actually delivered a, a marine program through to JMP in China, uh, which was a huge success. So um, using our digital platforms, we were able to de deliver a, a virtual campus and um, our teaching staff had delivered from our, our ACE facility, but delivered through a translator and delivered to a, um, a class over in China. And um, we're also building a, um, an institute uh, in India. So very proud of our operating models and we'll continue to fine tune them as we move forward. This gives you a little bit of a snapshot, I suppose, on, um, on, on the courses that we offer. Um, we're, we're talking about automotive. So um, in, in the automotive space, we, um, we, we'd be one of the only providers who actually have 
uh, probably at 90% of every automotive course under the one roof, which uh, puts us in a unique position because it gives our teaching staff the exposure to not just one type of automotive industry, but to basically to all of them. So, and our students actually have the, um, the, the luxury of seeing all of these technologies around them as they study. They may be studying a particular qualification, but they just need to walk around the facility itself and they can actually get exposure to you know, a, a lot of different areas. You know, and this, this includes, um, as you can see there, we've got motorcycle trucks, um, anything to do with the cars, uh, paint and panel, sales, you name it, we've actually got you know, um, a, a course in that, that area. Our international programs are framed around the light vehicle qualification, uh, which is um, the, the, the area where there's, there's most uh, job security and, and job opportunity. There's, um, there's a job shortage in Australia at the moment in, in the light vehicle sector in particular. So this gives, uh, places our students in a really uh, good position to be able to move forward into the automotive sector and pick up some full-time work. We do have a, a little snapshot of the graph there that sort of breaks down um, where our majority of our, our student cohorts are coming from. And I suppose you'll see um, the, the biggest slice of that pie there is our light vehicle um, component. Um, and, and light vehicle does cover quite a few areas. And um, our international programs sit well within that light vehicle area. So um, the international programs do uh, follow a, a very similar qualification um, as a lot of our other cohorts. So we, we're blessed to be able to bring the technology and the learnings that we have with industry in some of our other areas and be able to apply them through into our international deliveries as well. So very proud and very lucky to have this suite of um, courses that sit behind um, everything that we do. And uh, touched on, on before, uh, digital platforms um, are a direction in which we've been heading to probably almost 10 years now. And, um, and that's something that we're, as technology changes and our ability to embrace technology changes, we're continually building our digital platforms and, um, and, and in increasing in their um, ability to support students and to support uh, a, a good learning environment. Uh, this, this sort of snapshot that we've got here is just one of many different sort of platforms that we, we run with, um, but essentially it will allow our students to access their learning materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they have access to, to, to click on a, on a link, basically. That will take them through to a particular unit of study. And, and within that unit of study, there'll be a, a, a series of video content, um, some questionnaires, um, images, diagrams, and, um, and various different sort of um, learning opportunities for the student to work through. And, um, and as I said, it gives the student the flexibility to actually be able to do some of these um, learning outside of um, you know, the four walls on campus. And even I think it was recently just last month or uh, yeah, I think it was about a month or so ago, we've, we've got students that are, um, I guess displaced at the moment, they can't actually get back to Australia because of the travel restrictions. But we have some of our international students that are actually still logging in um, into our systems from places like India and, um, and, and asking um, some teachers for assistance uh, on a particular area, which just gives us um, comfort to know that the digital platforms are uh, you know, providing access and providing support to, to students wherever they are in the world. Uh, these programs are you know, continually being developed and um, we're, we're probably market leaders in this space at the moment, and we continue to grow and develop these, um, you know, these channels to support all those students. We'll put this slide in here to give a, a bit of an understanding of some of the, uh, the delivery models that we do have in place. And, um, and our key client programs are, are industry-led and employer-led. So there's a, a, a whole list of names down there, uh, quite a few of which you'll probably recognise as uh, multinational companies. A lot of them are locally very large um, uh, automotive providers. And, um, and each and every one of those, we have a, a completely custom and tailored delivery. So we have a, um, you know, the, any two of the, those uh, brands that you'll see there have a completely different course and um, are delivered specifically to their requirements. So as, as you could probably imagine, a, a Toyota program and a Nissan program would look different. Uh, they have different technology, they have different requirements, they have a different company history, and we emulate what the actual um, OEM or the provider is after. So we essentially provide them an extension to their factory training. 
uh, which has put us in a, a fabulous position because being able to develop these programs with some of these clients can take us up to around two years to develop, uh, but it provides us access to the industry and to exactly what's happening. So we, we will be able to work um, with these companies on a day-to-day -day basis. We have access to their technology. They'll give us an understanding of, of, of what's actually happening in the industry, uh, which is something that money can't buy. And um, I don't know, I think we, we, we're definitely market leaders in this space. And I don't know if anyone else has got the capacity to tap into industry uh, the way that we do. And although these are um, you know, specific to the particular um, industries that you see on the screen here, we take a lot of this technology, a lot of these learnings, and we build them into our digital platforms and we can apply these learning and technology to all of our programs. And this is where our international students actually get some benefit uh, because we're so well connected within the industry. We can actually uh, provide them with, with contemporary up-to-date information, uh, industry trends. We have access to um, you know, scan tool data, specific data that which wouldn't be available to most training providers. Uh, just recently, we had uh, for our international program in particular, we've had a, um, a new Lexus vehicle donated. We've had a new Hyundai vehicle donated. And it's not just a vehicle, which is amazing on its own, but we also have the access to the technical data behind these vehicles. So uh, the international group will have access to the workshop manuals for Hyundai. So they can actually go through, put some, um, so some faults or, or some work within the vehicle itself. And the student will actually be looking up the actual um, Hyundai workshop manuals, which a lot of people wouldn't have access to. So it really gives them a, um, an elevated level of learning and, um, and industry best and industry focused. So best practice is um, what we're able to apply uh, from these learnings, which we push into all of our other programs, which we're very happy to be able to do. Thank you. And this, um, well, we, I don't think we actually had enough uh, screen to actually put all of our partners on here. So this is really just a high level snapshot. Um, we would have probably two or three times the amount of um, partners as you see on the screen here. Um, and and we're, we're really blessed, I suppose, to have these partners. These, um, the, as you can see, they're, again, they're multinational industry leaders. We, we pride ourselves in partnering with the best. And uh, we provide, pride ourselves in actually partnering with companies that can provide a benefit to our students. So we, we don't just um, partner with industry um, for a, a donation or for, for something relatively simple. We need to actually make sure that there's gonna be something in it for our students at the end of this. So each of these partnerships uh, will actually have a flow on effect, which will see, um, have impact in any of our delivery areas. So. We do have various different types of arrangements with different uh, providers, uh, but it's, it's not just um, you know physical resources which are which are amazing. So we, we, we're blessed to be able to you know collect and and, um, and and pick up contemporary vehicles, but we have also access to technical learning manuals which some of these providers will supply to us, and technical information which no other uh, provider can really access on like this. And the only people that could access them would be a particular workshop. Um, that, that represented that brand. So we're lucky to be able to tap into all of these resources. Some of these, uh, we also have what we call a copyright clearance with. So these, these particular multinational brands are allowing us to use their technical information and actually add it into our learning management system and our online learning. So students can actually access some of the, the latest technical information, which wouldn't be available to the, um, to, to the average student. So again, um, our industry is, is what helps shape us it helps keep us relevant and, um, and it provides us with the, um, you know, that technical link, I suppose, which adds a lot of value to our, our delivery in our programs. And, um, and, and in industry, this is sort of just a, a snapshot of what it sometimes looks like. So um, the, the two images we've got here are, are from uh, Mitsubishi Motors and from Chrysler Australia. Um, we would host probably five or six um, OEM or industry training events per year. Um, so essentially what that means is a particular industry or a car brand of some sort will have their own technical training, which they deliver to their own personal network and we host it on our facility. What we do is we do have an agreement with most of these providers where we can actually put our students or, and or staff into these programs. So our staff are actually getting first hand uh, the training, which is what the industry is getting. 
So um, that allows us to, to, to stay up to date. It allows us to get the, um, the, the most um, techno technologically advanced style training. And, um, and we can then apply that and bring that into our classroom environment and, um, and, you know, and, and provide students with the intel, which um, you know, not many other people would have the access to. So, um, and this is always evolving. As everyone knows with um, the technology in, in vehicles at the moment is moving at such a rapid rate that without these um, particular type of partners, we, we just wouldn't have the, um, the ability to apply that to our learning. Only um, two weeks ago, we had Tesla, um, Tesla Motors in, and, and obviously everyone's very um, uh, aware of the, the Tesla brand and the technology that comes behind it. So uh, we had, um, you know, they brought a Tesla vehicle in, we were allowed to go through it, have a look at the car, manipulate some of the systems, went through a, a full presentation by Tesla's uh, national training manager who delivered all the technical content. And they allowed us to have our staff involved in that training session and, um, and gave us an understanding of, of what those vehicles are about. And, um, and again, we, we take that learning um, and, and we can have those conversations now with our students um, fully understanding exactly what's happening in the industry. So I, um, so this is, I guess in, in closing, we, um, we're, we're very unique in, in many ways where we have these, um, these relationships with industry. We've been around for a very long time. We're very proud of what we do. We've got an amazing um, set of staff who, um, who, who, who love what they do and have been here for a long time. So um, thanks again, everyone for giving me the opportunity just to, to briefly talk about ACE. And so I think I'll be handing over to Matt and Stella, who's going to talk a little bit more about placements afterwards. So thank you all. Thank you, Gavin, for that detailed overview of the Automotive Centre of Excellence. And it's a real shame that we couldn't host you on campus, but we do invite you to come uh, to contact us in the future because you really have to see it for yourself. It's amazing. We'll be sharing some 3D uh, links that you can take a 3D tour at the end of the presentation. Um, and now I'd like to invite Matthew Ellis, who's the lead educator of our international and short courses, um, and also Stelios, uh, who's the teacher of our automotive courses, to take you through our two-year automotive package, as well as um, talk to you about work placement. So thank you, Matt and El Stelios. Um, I don't know if you can see me now. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Stelio Stelliano. Um, I'm one of the teachers. Uh... Hi, my name is Stelio Stelliano. I am one of the teachers in the International Diploma um, a program. Uh, my apologies because my team leader couldn't attend, was uh, in another meeting. So I'm taking over to um, explain a few things regarding uh, our, our program in the international area. Uh, our students uh, entering the diploma is uh, the period of two years, which is uh, starting with the certificate three and then advance into certificate four. And after that, the students, they're gonna be um, uh, into a higher level with the certificate uh, five. Um, uh, starting with the certificate three, when the students that come into the campus, the first thing after the induction, they're going to enter into the classes and the teachers, uh, they are getting involved with the groups. They need to uh, have a theory in class. Uh, it's sort of that pre-certificate three, which is we say certificate two, which is we learn a lot of, of theory in class a lot of um, knowledge regarding components, functions and operations. So the students, they are getting the knowledge of um, how and everything works around the campus, around the engines, around the uh, components of the engines, and also regarding uh, tools and equipment. Uh, don't forget to mention that uh, firstly, uh, we're getting involved with uh, safety, which is a prior um, um, uh, link to everything of what we're doing at the, at the campus. And also later on, after 10 weeks of training, the students, um, they need to follow a special work, um, work program, which is, uh, we call it uh, um, uh, 
rated this program, the students, they have to spend nearly uh, 10 to 12 weeks regarding to follow this program. Um, after they complete this program, which is uh, takes 10 to 12 weeks, like I said, they need to enter into uh, the workplace, into the industry. Uh, they need to be safe. They need to be knowledgeable what they're doing and what to achieve. Um, the program of the of of uh, of um, uh, the industry program, uh, they need to apply. They need to enter seven hundred working hours in a workplace to gain the skills. So eventually, the student is um, ready and confident to go into the workplace. If the student is not complete that uh, program, uh, we don't give him the authorization, we don't give him the agreement to go ahead in the workplace. Um, the first, the first after they then they learn the knowledge and then they entering into the certificate three, uh, the teacher has to take the students out in a workshop, show them a lot of uh, a lot of practical work given the tasks, given the activities, and the students, they have to apply and do all this on their own. Uh, now, after they finish and complete the certificate three, they enter into certificate four, which is the certificate four, it takes another six months to complete that. It's all about complex faults, analyzing and evaluation in level five. Starting with the certificate four, um, diagnose complex faults so the students they will be able to to work in a workshop or in industry knowing how to use scanners or electronic analyzing for and uh, diagnosing diagnosis faults on um, on a vehicle um, using the equipment of electronics uh, and then after completing all these uh, tasks, 10 tasks or 10 competencies in certificate four, they need to go into level five, which is level five, it's analyze and evaluation. Uh, analysis and evaluation of theory, applying research to practical problems, formulating solutions to complex issues, and designing effective professional practical within the competency. Uh, in some little words, I would like to say that uh, the last level of level five, it's uh, mainly a lot of a lot of research to analyze the faults, to find out the cause and the symptoms, why those faults occur into the vehicle or into the, um, in, into the studies. And then from there, the students, they need to prepare uh, a presentation which is a presentation they have to present in class in front of the audience and explain all the analyzations and all the evaluations they, they commit to do. After that, the students, uh, they need to uh, carry on with the assignments and complete their tasks. Um, I go back to the workplace readiness book before they go into the workshop. and should be a slide there to show how the students um, complete and prepare uh, themselves before they go into the industry. Uh, it's a program, like I said, of 700 hours, but unfortunately at school, they need to, to, to work between the 10 to 12 weeks to achieve that competency and then move on into the industry. Our teachers are fully committed. Our campus is well equipped with the latest equipment. So we try to do as much as we can and also to provide whatever the student needs. So unfortunately, as um, soon as uh, they get into the workplace, the student is, um, is more into the industry uh, skills and then is teacher or allocated person from our institute will pay a regular visit to the industry and see how the, the student is progressive how the student is, um, is, um, is developing with the industry. And then uh, after that, we get a written letter from the, from the industry to, to show us that the student it is competent and is on the right track. Back to the program now, as we can see, 
they have to perform live work in a, in, a, in a campus. And we have to go through a few, a few um, uh, safety issues uh, through the program. Um, carrying out that issues is, um, firstly, is um, the safety. And then we go into the tooling, uh, equipment, like how to operate a hoist, how to, um, how to work in a safe environment. Um, and after we do a lot of demonstration regarding uh, all the um, uh, needs for the student to complete this program, uh, the students, they're taking control on their self pace. So a teacher will stay back and, and, and observe and, and see how the student will carry on with the competencies and the activities. As soon as they enter into the program, the students, they, the, the teacher has to, um, has to show uh, the students uh, every step of the way. And then, like I said, uh, the student has to follow on his own. Uh, eventually has to be signed off and if the student is competent will be signed off to each an individual competency starting with the major service operations service operations is a life work at, at campus which is the working on institute vehicles and also students they're allowed to bring their own cars or any vehicles from the institute they're allowed to do life work um, it is very important for the student to, to carry on and, 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 and pay a very serious um, uh, uh, concentrations and very serious to the activities because uh, these activities, they're, they're entering into the campus that they want, they're going to they're gonna carry on every day in their workplace. Uh, they need to follow step by steps. Uh, they need to check about 137 uh, safety points on a vehicle, uh, each one which is uh, from the uh, from the beginning um, uh, external of the vehicle, and then they go underneath where the engine and then underneath the vehicle. So it's 137 safety points, one by one. The students they need to follow to complete the the service operation. After that, they need to carry on with. Uh, with the with the braking system, suspension systems, and carry on all the uh, all the knowledge regarding uh, regarding engine function and operation. Uh, what diagnosis they need to, to go ahead and do? Everything is on a um, on a scanner and on a big a big a big um, uh, monitor TV that every student has to um, uh, see. Uh, nice and clear what one student does, and then every student takes the turns and develops different skills and different tasks in uh, in a vehicle. Our students they are fully committed. Uh, every industry, like uh, my manager said before, that uh, all the partners they are involved with the international program program uh, uh, as well. We've got students in uh, uh, in a lot of a lot of uh, uh, dealerships. Uh, a lot of Delish, they're very happy with our students because um, they carry the level five certificate, which is the highest certificate you can carry in automotive. Uh, our department uh, are so proud regarding to these, uh, to these uh, achievements we, we, we're creating in, uh, in our campus and Kankan Institute is always, is always ahead and in technology and in the staff. Uh, to carry on with uh, with our, our programs. Thank you. Thank you, Stelios, for no that worries. detailed course overview. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, now I'm, I'm excited to introduce our two student panelists and they'll be going through their current study experience uh, throughout their automotive co courses. But before I do so, I'd also like to mention that both of these students are part of our International Student Welfare Program. Ciro is a valued member and an active member of our student working group. And Louisa is our marketing intern who helps us review our international, course con uh, international communication content to our international students. So firstly, I'd like to welcome Ciro. Are you there, Thank you, Thank you. Can you hear me all right? 
Yes. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Chiro Monaco. I'm a student of Automotive Technology, Certificate 4. And I chose Kangan Institute because it is well known to deliver uh, the best training methodology and also uh, have built a really strong relationship uh, with the industry itself, like uh, Kevin illustrated before. Um, I think the most enjoyable part of studying automotive with Doha and Kangan Institute uh, is the powerful teacher student relationship. And, uh, you know, the most interesting thing that I learned in my course is the mindset that we have diagnosing and repair comfort um, which can apply to many other working experience uh, that you can also encounter in life itself. Um, I'd like to mention uh, two people that brings me a really positive change inside the academic institute and you know help to make the uh, students more enjoyable. And these are Stelio Stagliano, uh, also known as Papa Stel, is our home group teacher uh, because um, he helped us with any kind of matter at school, but also uh, in per personal life struggle, as we well know during the pandemic. Has been a little bit tough for some students, and we all could also always rely on the, the homework teacher. Uh, and also, I want to thank uh, Diana and uh, that uh, for working very hard organizing events funded by the International Student Welfare Program, uh, which I've been part of, um, and offering students uh, many workshops to increase um, their. Uh, knowledge and the skills on the trade or even just personal skills to grow. Uh, I'm currently employed uh, in the Sunday Center Workshop. And the name of the workshop is McLean Motors. I know this out from when I'm attending right now. Um, Kangan Institute, uh, with the help of the university student working group, uh, gave us a lot of opportunity to as I say, to develop our skills uh, for, for thematic like leadership uh, and like how to attend uh, a successful job interview. And that has me really a lot to develop my skill in the trade. Um, my ultimate career objective is to become an advanced uh, diagnosis technician. Uh, that's, I think, it's, it's my final goal. Uh, to, to set my experience in the trade, and certainly I'm really happy to have chosen Kanganisti for this matter. Thank you, Ciro, for sharing your current study experience. Um, now I'd like to invite Louisa. Are you there, Louisa? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you see me? Can't see you, Hi. Louisa, but we can hear you. Oh, I'm here. Uh, now we Sorry. can. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Louisa. I'm from Colombia. Uh, I'm also I'm studying I'm studying mechanic or automotive in Kangan Institute. I'm actually very happy studying in there because like uh, teachers are very welcoming, uh, especially with me. You know, like I'm the only girl in my course. I'm in certificate certificate three. Um, and they're very like welcoming with me, with all of my classmates. Um, I'm just starting my workshop uh, placement. I'm very happy as well because my teacher has been like uh, asking me about how everything is going. Also, like they explained everything, um, like every part of the process or how we have to do, how we can find or get our workshop placement as well. So. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm like happy studying at Kengen. It's because like everyone is willing to help me, willing to help us. I also like the workshops because we have all the tools. Also, we have um, the equipment that we need and the PPE as well. Um, and they are always like uh, behind of us 
and they are explaining everything to us. I think that I'm very happy studying at Kangen. And it's, it's very challenging as well, but like everyone is always willing to help us. Okay, thank you to both Ciro and Louisa. Are there any questions for our two student panelists before they have to go back to their workplace? I've noticed that the Q&A is very quiet. Okay, if there are no further questions for our two students, but you can, if you think of any questions later, please feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to convey them to our two students or to the rest of the panelists that you've heard from earlier. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, there we go. So I'd like to remind you about our current automotive scholarship that we did um, share a few months ago. Uh, so it is valued at 8,400 and it's applied at the final semester. So it's at the diploma semester of the two year automotive package, um, which is a really considerable saving. Um, and it's valid for students that are commencing the two year automotive package in July, 2021. So I encourage you, if you have some students that are interested, particularly with the $8,400 savings, it's going to be very significant. Please send through your applications because the applications will be closing the 12th of July. There's more details on the website, but please feel free to contact me if you have any questions regarding this current automotive scholarship. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce uh, Mira Pascheta, who's the Director of Studies in Alicos, and she'll be giving us an overview of her Alicos Centre. So thank you, Mira. Good morning, everyone. Well, I suppose you may ask, what is the difference between us and other Alicos providers? For a start, um, we are centrally located TAFE Alicos provider in the CBD, which means we are stable. Uh, we are regulated by the national regulator and therefore our standards are really high. We run three different programs in Alicos, um, that is IELTS, General English and EAP, and we do these programs really well. So with the regulations that, you know, that we um, alluded to, um, comes highly qualified teachers with years of work experiences in Australia and around the world. Many of our teachers are bilingual as well. Um, so it really does help with uh, students who are very, very low, who start at a really low level in the English language programs. Now, we also align our delivery with our mission and that is to use current methodologies that is relevant, appealing and useful for our students. Our educators are extremely capable and innovative, and we have seen this through research that they do and the use of technolo technologies in the classroom. So this was also evident in how quickly we adapted during COVID. We continued to provide the same level of quality service to our students in remote delivery as we did face-to-face. -face. Now, what's really important to highlight is our students not only learn English, language, but also learn to use the language in their pathway or work environment. Now we do this by ensuring that students engage in activities that will expose them to the needs of these environments, such as leadership programs and industry visits. And these activities either run locally in the institute or with our industry partners. Other than these activities, we know that students are here to learn, um, you know, in a fun way. And we make this happen through our regular outdoor lessons and visits to places of fun and interest. Uh, if you have any other questions for me, please feel free to ask, because I know that there could become some burning questions about how we are conducting the lessons now and how we will proceed to post-COVID as well. Thank you. Thanks, Elda. Thank you, Mira. Like I remind you, please, if there are any questions to regarding our automotive or our English language center that we've just presented, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Um, so here I'm sharing our 2021-2022 course guide, which is available on the website. Um, and here you can see some information about the courses we've covered, plus uh, the range of other vocational courses that we offer as well. So have a look in your in, when you have some time and reach out if you have any questions. 
Um, so the next slide is, is all of our uh, contact details for the international team. And we would invite you to contact us if you are looking, uh, if you'd like us to organize uh, a campus tour when it's safe to do so. We'll be happy to host you on campus, on any of our campuses, actually. Um, and feel free to contact us if you'd like us to organize any staff training for your team members who are unable to join us today. And if you'd like us to participate in any information sessions or events uh, that you're organizing for your students, we'll be happy to, to um, collaboratively work with you and support you with that as well. And finally, as we come to the end of our webinar, I'd like to again thank our panelists for their detailed information and our students as well for joining us today. Here I've shared the 3D tour links. Um, so please have a look uh, when this presentation is shared with you for the amazing facilities that Gavin covered from our Automotive Centre of Excellence, as well as um, Mira for our Alacost Centre. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and please reach out if you have any further questions as we've just covered. Um, we hope that you all stay well and stay safe um, and enjoy the rest of your, the day. And we hope to see you face to face soon. Thank you.